It is officially Super Bowl week in FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook wants to wish everyone who celebrates a very happy Super Bowl Sunday. If you're like us, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seats on the couch, grabbing your favorite snacks, and placing some super bets. And FanDuel has a ton of different ways to help you end the season with not just one W, but two or three, or hopefully even more. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score touchdowns, how many points will be scored, and so much more, including my favorite prop bet, over 86 and a half seconds on the National Anthem. It's never been that short before. The over-under lowest, or I guess shortest, over-under in National Anthem length history. Hammer the over on that one. New customers who join FanDuel today get $200 in bonus bets if their first bet of $5 or more wins. So visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash UCSS. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. And today's winning ticket comes from our guy, Akron Dre Day, who continues to pile up the money. He turned $5 into $775 with an alternate spread, Uh. five-part parlay, Cat over 25 points, DeRozan over 25 points, Vucevic over 20, Edwards over 35, and Kobe White over 20. All five of those hit. He turned $5 (laughs) into $774.65. If you guys have winning FanDuel tickets, make sure you send it to us yeah. on Twitter or via email, and we'll continue to feature them throughout the show. And we expect to have a ton of winning Super Bowl tickets come Monday That's and through all of next he week. He is bold for three people over 25 that, points on the same team. I know. I won over 35. Well, not on the same team, but one over, over 35. He has somebody over 35? Yeah, Anthony Edwards over 35. By the way, Mike gets a I'm, – I'm in between a B and a B-plus from Mike. He, it was a little slow start to that read. You get a tougher grading scale than Earl because you have a lot Fair. more experience. Fair. Uh, you really picked it up midway. I thought you brought it home strongly with good passion and energy. You were a little low on energy in the beginning of that read, though. I was a little disappointed by that. Duly noted. So there we go. We'll go I'll be better, I'll be better for the second one. You picked it up. All right. All right. Let's get into the stadium stuff because yes. there's this there's this Twitter handle, Northeast Ohio. Do we have the tweet? Northeast Ohio blog, whatever, land, I don't know what the hell it's It's NEO Trans blog, Northeast yeah. Ohio Trans I don't know blog. who that is. But they often put stuff out about stadium things involving the Browns. They've been right sometimes, they've been wrong sometimes. But the reason we're bringing it up is because other people have information on this as well. Browns owners buying 176 acres in Brook Park. Airport adjacent site is under contract. Jason, speaking of adjacent, Jason is here. Eh, that's a stretch. Close. Uh, Jason, are, are, are you buying that they have bought, that this is true, and that this is specifically where they're going to put the new stadium? Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's true that they are close to an agreement. Yeah. It's not done. I, don't, I already forgot what the tweet said, if it was done or not. But it's not, it's not done, but they're close to an agreement yes. that would give them the right to purchase it. So that's true. Um, it's a hammer in negotiations, right? Like, right. I think the Browns have been frustrated by the city slow playing this. Like, they, the, the, the city has not been as proactive at coming to the negotiating table as the Browns would like. So now they just went out and bought a really big hammer. Or they're in the process of potentially yeah. buying a really big hammer that you can say, okay, well, then we're just going to go over here. Now, there's still a lot of loop, loops to close if you're going to try and build a new stadium on this land. But um, certainly, it's about, obviously, that's why they're buying it, right? Like, that's why they're buying it. Now, you could buy that land, sit on it, and redevelop it into something else. You know, sure. you could. But obviously, this is right next to the practice facility. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's close to the stadium. It's a giant area. The thing that's interesting, I, I've actually been – the last few days digging in on the stadium stuff. Yeah. And I was kind of zeroing in on the IX center. That's where I thought the other side of the, I was on the wrong side. Yeah. So the, but the, the interesting part about this land is there are, let's say that this gets done and the stadium's going here. There are FAA rules about height restrictions that close to the airport Mm -hmm. because of runways and everything else. Sure. So, Depending on where they put this thing, I was told, because when I was looking at the IX Center site, I was told they may have to put a significant portion of it underground 
because you have to keep it low uh, for the runways. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, maybe this plot of land is so big that they can shove it off somewhere where, that, the where that doesn't apply. Away from right, the stadium. right. If you can, if you can shove it off far enough away from the airport, right. maybe you don't have Why to do that. Why doesn't that apply to the Burke Airport? With the, uh, with because, the Brown Stadium? Yeah. That's a good question. Maybe because it's, it's private a, planes and right. roller planes. I don't know. I yeah, don't have I don't the answer know. to that. Okay. But they I take off the opposite direction, too. The runway is take off that way. They land coming towards Brown Stadium. Yeah, but still, you still, sure still have to fly matters, over it. You still have to fly over That's actually a good question. But I was, I was told, like, FAA okay. rules, they're going to have to, like, well, again, when I was looking at the IX Center site. Right. But this still applies to it because it's, it's still right and there, the airport. And there's, just, there's a whole project starting to build a new airport, essentially, where the airport mm -hmm. is. What, what I don't understand is they've just recently redone the airport. Yeah, but it's, it needs a lot of But help. why did they redo it if they're going to build a new one? Well, I don't know. They're not really building a new one. Oh, I, they're doing, I thought no. they were. No, I mean, I, they're expanding it, I think, or they're renovating it. Yeah. But they're not, it's not like they're building a new airport somewhere. I mean, no, Hop not somewhere else, but I mean, like, I thought they were redoing the whole well, thing. Well, it needs redone because yeah. Hopkins Airport is terrible. Compared to terrible, in what way? Oh, it just—it's <laughs> easy to get around it's, here. I mean, I can leave my house. Yeah. I left my house 48 minutes before the plane took off. Yeah, sure. And still made the flight. Exactly. That part is that part's great. The best part. You but, never have to wait there. But the inside amenities and stuff—it's not as good as no, some of the not, other airports. Great, so that's what I'm talking. All about. right, but it, so the interesting part, like we know, billionaires that own these teams should pay for their whole stadiums locked. Lock, stock, and barrel. They mm -hmm. should. In in a perfect world, they would. In reality, most of them don't. I believe the Rams guy yes. paid for his Stan old Stan Cranky. I think he's the only one that has recently. Maybe I, I'm wrong about that. I, I'm not sure. Who, Usually there is who city, paid for Vegas? Money. I don't know. I think Vegas, I need to look at the financing on Vegas. I don't remember. Minnesota was half and half. Owners put up half. Yeah. Uh, the rest was publicly funded. Right. Atlanta, Arthur Blank put up. I think half, okay. close to half. That seems like what usually happens. Now, I think Buffalo's half and half, too. No, Buffalo got a ton of public more. money. Oh, even more. more than half I don't think half. he's even paying half. Public, or Buffalo got a ton of public and money. And they are is. putting the dome on there. I don't think they are. Which is stupid. That makes no sense yeah, to me. No, now, <laughs> first of all, Jason, um, so I don't know if you know this answer. I don't know who knows this answer. I don't know if you can even prove this. So, to me, it seems like, the first reaction is, oh, my God, if they leave Cleveland, that's terrible for the city. And then I was thinking about it. I was like, well, even though, obviously, the Browns are way more popular than the Guardians or the Cavs, it feels like those teams leaving would be worse because there's a lot more home dates. Yes. Now, obviously, the Browns leaving from a, from a business standpoint, yeah, on those eight or nine or ten, if you include the preseason, maybe 11 or 12 potentially, those days, that's bad for businesses downtown. That's not good. There's no. I wonder though, over oh, in the grand scheme of things, because now the city of Cleveland would not have to give any money for a new stadium if it's in Brook Park, where the city's going to be on the hook for, I would assume, at least some of the money. The county still will. The county still will. True, but not the city. So I don't know. I, does it? Is is there any way this is a, not terrible for Cleveland? Or? I I don't think it's terrible for Cleveland, but I'm yeah. not. I'm not going to yeah. pretend to be an expert on this stuff, but the, when again, when I was looking at the IX Center site, the way it was described to me was there is zero economic impact surrounding area. it. Because if it's downtown, at least you have to park your car, you walk right. past restaurants and bars, you're going right. to stop, you're going to get a drink, something to eat, whatever. If it's out in the suburbs, or in this case by the airport, you're going to drive to the stadium, you're going to park your car, you're going to walk into the stadium, you're going to get back in your car, and you're going to leave. Right. Now... It's also a huge plot of land, and we don't know what they're going to build up around it. And yeah. Jimmy's going to own it all. That's what I, I mean, so think about yeah. this. You could do – the Patriot Stadium is in, like, a giant shopping mall. The you could Uber, do something like that. The Uber drop-off for the Patriot Stadium is in front of, like, Brugger's Biggles. Yeah, right. It's crazy. Right. It's weird. I remember yeah. I was going – I went there not for a game. I actually went there for somebody's wedding, and we were staying – just happened to be staying in the hotel where the stadium was. And I was like – this is weird. Yeah. The stadium's in a shopping Fox mall. Foxborough is 50 spring. minutes outside of Boston. What's that? It's 50 minutes outside of yeah, Boston. Yeah, right. It's There's not nothing else in Foxborough besides it's actually, the stadium and what they built around it. It's actually closer to fly into, what is it, Rhode Island? New yeah, Hampshire, I'm not sure. Right? Rhode Island. We drove, so I don't know. There, There's a there's an airport. I can't remember now. Yeah. There's a different airport that's actually closer to Foxborough than right. Boston. Okay. I thought it was Rhode Island, but maybe I'm wrong on that. But either way, I mean, I, I listen, I don't know. I It... it 
in some way, it does feel kind of sad if the team did move out of Cleveland. Okay. But <coughs> if, if, if it were up to Jimmy Haslam, what do you think he would do? If he had his druthers. Use public funding and stay in Cleveland. Oh. You think he'd rather stay in Cleveland in a I perfect think, world? I think he wants to do this. He wants to own, he wants to buy a big plot of land. Yeah. Build a stadium. Get, he's going to have to put in a significant portion. He'll get public funding for the rest, which is not an easy sell because these things are really expensive. Yeah. And then he can build up the area around it. Shopping, hotels, restaurants, li- yeah. condos, a Crocker mixed Park use living. Type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And print money. I've been saying it for years, except I said 480 and 77. Yeah. I thought they right. should go out to 40 and 77 and do yeah. it. Build out there in print money. Well, he's yeah. going to do it now. If this goes through, he's going to do it now right there. And I will say, I, I can't figure out like where this is in relation to the IX Center, but I still think that there's something... Like, I can't tell. I'm looking at it too, trying like where. Director is it? Steve says the IX Center is a little past where you can see on the left. So is like, it walking distance to this stuff? Steve says no. No. Could you put a footbridge there? And the only reason I'm saying this, or it like looks a tunnel, like it's the airport to me. I don't know where is the airport, but like right behind it, right? But, the, the airport's right across from the yeah. red area, so you're like going through an airport. There's no way you could walk from there if it's over to the left. Okay, because what the reason that Indianapolis is so good with the conventions and everything is because Lucas Oil Stadium is attached to their convention center. So right, right, right. that's why oh, they yeah, can do so there. many different events. That's why yeah. I was just wondering if there's any way at all to connect this to the IX Center like they do in Indianapolis. Probably. And, I mean, Cleveland has a convention center downtown right. that has taken a lot of the events. I mean, the IX Center was closed for a couple of years. Yeah. But I just wonder if there's a way to refurbish the IX Center and to connect all this, tie all this together because they are so close together. Indianapolis, they're connected. Like you walk right yeah. from the convention center yeah, into be- Lucas Oil Stadium. It is beautiful. There's right? not a- I did the Big Ten Championship yeah. yes. this year. I stayed yeah. at the hotel, walked right across the street. It's There's great. not a lot over here. Like they would need to build some restaurants and 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 he'll own it all and some and some hotels there because yeah. you know you got that hotel at the airport, but there's not. Well, I think they closed that. Oh, is that, that Sheridan? Yeah, I believe that's and like closed. the restaurants. It, in, it's being torn down. Yeah, generally right by where the practice facility is. There's like no good restaurants there. There's no, nothing, it's not. not you know, it's kind of crappy over there. But they'll have like they'll have the market on that whole yeah. area. It's interesting. I hope it doesn't hurt I Cleveland. Just, I, I wonder what they yeah. do with the old stadium. If this does go through, what happens? Well, to couldn't those you re- couldn't that land be turned into condos or restaurants? Well, I would imagine I mean, that's probably what they would do. You could do that. Knock it yeah. down and make it home. And, and the stuff. other part on all this is and I don't think that these projects are connected they're not one is not reliant on the other but the city of Cleveland has this push to bring women's soccer into the city and in order to do that they need a place to play and they're not putting a women's soccer team that's going to draw two or three thousand people probably at the start into a 70,000 seat stadium so the, the idea is if Cleveland could get a 10,000 seat outdoor structure facility, it would be perfect for, you could do women's soccer. You could possibly bring a men's soccer team. Like the women's soccer team would be like the anchor tenant, yeah. but you could bring uh, state championship high school football playoffs to that. You That's could true. bring St. Ignatius could play its home games there. Are you saying you could bring the Paralympics the there? Stadium? No, saying I'm saying the with, the, with the new, if they can build this new, 10,000 seat oh, you're saying facility. If, if they stay downtown instead. Well, I, no, no, no. I'm oh. saying... In addition to? Yeah, I'm saying these are like parallel tracks. You've got the oh. Brown Stadium track, oh. and you've got this other facility track. Yeah. If so, you're going to bring a women's soccer team here, you got to have them play somewhere. Sure. And they're not going to put them in a 70,000 seat no. arena. Right. So there's just this So thought. you're saying that if the Browns do take the airport thing, the old stadium would get knocked down well, and rebuilt to 10,000? It could be. Oh, okay. I see. It could be. Yeah. I, it's a it's a possibility. Like it right there is. A, I mean, they got to do something with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't let it just sit but there. somewhere they have to put this ten thousand seat if they're going to bring women's soccer here. And I was told you could build this thing for sixty million to a hundred million somewhere in there. It's not the two billion dollar price tag that right. comes with the new football stadium. And you could and David Gilbert does such a phenomenal job here in town with events and everything else. He could fill that thing all summer long. Concerts, comedians. Uh, St. Ignatius home football games. Would they put a dome on it when they rebuild it? 
That no. Now, now we're talking about. <laughs> hey, okay, quick, can I cut you off for one sec? Yeah. We have uh, a statement on this from the Browns, so I want to read this. This is from Peter John Baptiste, Jason's best friend. We've been clear on how complex future stadium planning can be. One certainty out is our commitment to greatly improving our fan experience while also creating a transformative and lasting impact to benefit all of Northeast Ohio. We understand the magnitude of the opportunity with the stadium project, intent on driving more large-scale events to our region, and we are methodically looking at every possibility. We appreciate the collaborative process with the city of Cleveland and the leadership of Mayor Bibb in analyzing the land bridge and renovating the current stadium. At the same time, as part of our comprehensive planning efforts, we are also studying other potential stadium options in Northeast Ohio at various additional sites. There is still plenty of work to do and diligence to process before a long-term stadium solution is determined, and we'll share further updates at the appropriate time. Listen, okay, so that doesn't really, doesn't, certainly doesn't rule out Very well said, McNuggets. You know, a couple of things. Thank you. Um, in a, in a, yes, it'd be great for the Browns to have a new stadium. Yes, I don't want taxpayers to have to pay for it. It is what it is. I do think most fans would like a new stadium. Yeah. Brown Stadium is crappy. Yes. It's a crappy stadium. It was rushed. Yeah. It's the, the, I mean, this isn't important to most fans. Yeah. But it's very important to corporate suite holders and ticket. Yeah. You can't see, the sight lines are terrible. Yeah. From some of the most expensive suites, you can't even see the scoreboard. You can't see punts, that sort of thing. Right. You know who else is like that? Ohio Stadium. Oh, that thing's a relic. Yeah. <laughs> no, that not change that. But here's the thing, They have Jason. obstructed view all over the place. You There's going to, a pole. There is going to be a new Brown Stadium at some point here. I believe so. Two, two questions I have for you. Yeah. One, will there be a roof? Two, if you had to guess what year that there is the Browns play in a new stadium, wherever it may be, if you had your best guess of the year. When's the lease up? 28? If the lease is up in 28, it'll be 29. If okay. the lease is up in... The year after the lease the year, is up. The year after the lease is up. And, yes, I believe it will have a roof. Okay. I've come around on that, by the way, because I oh, didn't think it would. anti-roof? I wasn't just, anti-roof. I didn't, yeah. I didn't think it was going to be. But now you're convinced that it would will. Be, that would defeat the – well, first of all, with the quarterback that they have, they, they get in the roof. Is he going to be here in 2029? Yeah, I think so. You think so? I do. Well, I, I'm, I'm not I'm – not, I'm, I'm genuinely asking. I, I mean, don't. even if he don't, the person that they replace him would be like, thank you. Yeah, right? <laughs> you know, for all the small percentage of fans, oh, you got to be tough or you got to be in the cold. Do you really want to sit there freezing it's your ass miserable. off in a game? It's miserable. I, listen, I, yeah. I gotta, this, is, this is funny that you bring this yeah. up because I said that. I said, listen, as a player. Yeah. I hated it. Yeah. Right? I hated it. Of course. It. Like, I don't know why people... There probably are like, some players that like it, but most... No, hate everybody it. hates it. Okay. I don't know. You got to go out there All and right. put this 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 uh, persona on like it's fine and you don't care. But yeah, it, you hate playing in that because it affects the way that you play. It affects your mind. It's, it's a lot. And everybody's, oh, be tough-minded. No. Yeah. You want a good show. People come pay their money to come watch you have a great game. Yeah. I don't want to see you slipping and sliding all over no. the place. No, that's not the – so put the roof on it. Yeah. It helps with TV sales. It helps with fans, older, younger fans. Everybody continue to come throughout the season because they know that they don't have to freeze. That's it, right. It works for everybody. And you could have – Make sure you use natural grass. Though. And you could have more events. Natural grass. You know, concerts and stuff like natural that. Natural grass is all I – Should be natural grass. Natural grass. Agreed. That's it. But, I mean, if you could get a retractable roof, brand new stadium with all these fancy schmancy amenities that all these new stadiums have. You got to pay that, for it. That would be great. You got to figure out a way to pay for it. Yeah. Well, Jimmy's got plenty of money. It'll be, he'll have to he put up half a minimum of it. 50%. percent it will be. It would be at least $2 billion. <laughs> How much is this stocking out of with the bucks? Uh, he, that well, no, that, that price like never came out. I, I can't – I think we reported around like 400 million, and I was told that wasn't accurate, but I never did see what the accurate number was. But remember, he just sold Pilot to Warren right. Buffett, so he's got. Is the, that finished now? I thought there was. I believe. Some, I think it's I thought done. they were fighting over the evaluation. Yeah. No, I think it's done. It's, okay. There's no. It's settled. not a coincidence that all of a sudden he sells and boop, yeah. they got a new. How land much uh, do we know? How much he sold that for? No, two billion. That, that was a private company. A pilot was private. Are you wasn't serious, it? or are you just joking? <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> Two, how much you need for the stadium? Yeah, Two billion. I, believe, <laughs> I think pilot was private. I think, but I don't. I'm not. I mean, Jimmy that. should pay know. the whole thing. He won't. The, the state but, will be on the. But whole, there but, are different revenue streams yeah. you can look at. You can yeah. look at gambling, which I've been a proponent of for yeah. since they passed it. I I can't. I don't want to misspeak the numbers, but when they first legalized gambling, Ohio was going to rank like. 
just below, I think, Vegas they in the amount came, of money. Yeah, they just came out with that. They was yeah, third, the numbers right? have been ridiculous. Seven yeah. billion dollars, yeah. what Jay Crawford said this week. Yeah. Seven so, billion. So, and and, and like, they just passed that marijuana. That's next. Bam. <laughs> that's it. That's, I, that's serious. Those two together. Gambling that's and it. marijuana. And marijuana, <laughs> it's still sort of the wild, wild west and sort of the taxes around it. So they haven't figured out. Like gambling, they, they, money goes to they like gambling addiction classes and education. I'm not advocating to take money away from that. I'm saying you put it something on the ballot, pass for an extra tax, and they'll probably be passed on to the people, the gamblers, but you tax the companies and that's another added revenue stream. Right. That's what Minnesota did. Minnesota, the state, le- gambling is not legal in Minnesota, yet Minnesota did these like pull tab tickets. Right. And they made so much money off those pull tab tickets that they were in position to pay off their loans or to pay off the, the public portion of it right. years ahead of time.